Hello, Gary Simon of designcourse.com. Today, I'm gonna to do a real quick landing page redesign, and this was submitted from one of our de the designcourse.com members in the forum, and I decided, you know what, maybe today's video will be about just redesigning this real quickly. So, the design submitted was not bad at all, but I wanted to make just a few adjustments just to show how simple changes can result in a big difference. All right, so I'm just gonna use Photoshop for this real quickly. Uh, check out designcourse.com if you haven't yet and subscribe here on YouTube. All right, so here's the thread that was posted on Design Course from Helge, and I posted some uh, just some critiques basically. Uh, here's the site, or the landing page. So those of you who are unfamiliar with what a landing page is, so typically you know, a website has a home page and it usually consists of the logo and a navigation, the content, and like a footer and stuff. While a landing page is slightly different usually, it's more simplified, it's also known as a squeeze page, uh, and it's really just a way to minimize the areas that a visitor can exit or bounce off the current page. And and, to, and the reason that's important is if you have a specific type of objective, like to get people to enter the email in order to win you know, a free full license or something of something that you're offering, like which is the case of this uh, particular scenario, then you don't want them to exit, be able to click on other links. You want them to only focus on the central call to action, and that's what this is right here, a call to action, or otherwise you'll see it thrown around sometimes as CTA. Uh, and so basically this is what you would call a landing page. So in, in terms of design, uh, there's a lot that this person's getting right. So it's very simple. Uh, you can very you can e re easily read things. Uh, there's a lot of white space, which is always good. Uh, and it's straight, direct to the point. So it's very effective in that manner. It's also responsive as well, which is always a plus, as we could see. All right, so there were a couple other things. So if I had to uh, say anything negative, uh, I'd say that it felt a little bit bland or dry, as I put it. Um, and there's some also other things that could be done um, that would just make it better. So I'll explain as I go. All right, so I'm gonna screenshot this by alt print screening, and I'm gonna go to file new over here, hit okay, and paste that in. And I'm just gonna drag a selection um, just right around here, right around there, that'll work. Just to copy that and then paste that in. So I'm gonna quickly just recreate this layout using rec rectangle tool to first create this portion right here. And I will use the same color just temporarily as that background. And I'll move this down. And the logo, um, let's see here. The logo that they have, I would say is just too bland. They probably were planning on changing, I don't know. Uh, but there's nothing really unique about it. And I also say it was definitely too big in relation to the, set, to the headline. So people don't care about the logo generally. They care about, you know, they want to know exactly what is happening on any given web page they land on within the first few seconds. So this headline right here needs to be emphasized definitely over anything else, uh, especially the logo at least. All right, so what I'll do is just type in Lance billing and like the font size is tiny for some reason uh, I'm just gonna make that bigger I'm gonna make the logo more like this size and I'm gonna use a font called trade gothic which is a font that I paid for I really liked it um, yeah right there would be good and I'm not at 100% this is 100% so get that in there we'll make Lance this color alright so Already, if we hide these two layers, we we'll see Lance Billing goes from that size to this size, all right? Big difference. All right, so now client billing and invoicing software for freelancers. Okay, so I'm going to open that page up real quick. Again, on my forums, just by going here, design discussion. I'm off the screen, so you can't see this yet. So let go Lance Billing, okay. All right, so what I'm gonna do is uh, bring those back and I'm going to copy that, or paste it rather. I'm gonna use Source Sans Pro, and that's a Google font. 
and I use it a lot through my tutorials just because uh, those of you who've already followed, you know, uh, you likely already have it installed. All right, and then I'm gonna make this light for the font type. Okay, so another thing that I would definitely suggest changing about this is when it comes to a headline, and no, this doesn't really have anything to do with design, this is more about ad copy and marketing, uh, but when it comes to a headline, you always want to emphasize the benefits over the features, all right? So client billing and invoicing software for freelancers. That is more like a feature of what Lance Billing is, or it's just stating what it is. It's There's no benefit that is really being portrayed or conveyed through this headline. So this would be suitable for like a sub-headline, but we should emphasize a feature, or I mean, or a benefit rather, as the primary headline. People, this has been studied, people respond better to, you know, how they're going to benefit by using your product uh, over the features that are associated with your product, if that makes sense. So the one that I came up with was a quick and easy solution for client invoicing, okay? And I take this right here, make it this blue, and that just makes it, that's kind of like a feature, but it stands out pretty good. And we'll increase the size of this considerably and move this down maybe. And I'm just kind of eyeballing the centering and you wouldn't really normally just eyeball it like this for a real scenario, but I'm just quickly redoing this. So, uh, and then also, uh, let's see here. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna zoom out real quick. Now what I wanna do is, I wanna hide the rest of the background. So I'm just gonna make this square section white. I don't wanna see the other design right now. All right, so you definitely still wanna maintain good white space throughout. So I'm just moving things around a little bit. All right, so now another thing that I had mentioned, you know, it felt a little bit monochrome as I put it uh, in the original thread. Um, so if I bring this back here real quick. So we could see that I, uh, there's not, there's hardly no type of design or texture at all to this, which, you know, is fine. But in terms of modern design trends, something that a lot of people have been doing lately, a lot of designers and top designers, and it looks nice, uh, is adding some type of texture or adding some type of photograph, kind of like watermarked in the background. So this is something that's being done a lot right now. And so I, I went to DeviantArt and I tried to find like, something that would be suitable for client invoicing <laughs> and I wasn't able to find it, but I did. So I just found something random and silly. Um, so I, I found this picture just to show you how you can do this with a photograph. Obviously I don't wouldn't recommend he use this, but uh, just to show you how you use it, um, create a new layer and make it a clipping mask just like that. Control V to paste that sucker in and I'm gonna, that sucker, oh man pun not intended. So we'll go ahead, images, adjustments, and desaturate. Uh, and then we'll go over here to the layer blend modes and make sure it's selected. You have this blue outline, user down arrow key, and you could just kind of experiment with the different layer blend modes to see how that works. This one works pretty well. And so I'm gonna take the opacity down just a bit and maybe make this background color a little bit darker. Maybe right around there. All right, that way you get some type of, you know, it, it's not a flat, uh, it doesn't stick out to the point at which it clashes with the copy, which is very important that it doesn't, because you want people to be able to read what you got going on. Uh, and so, and then also if it were a relevant image, you know, it would really just give some type of uh, our design basically to, to the, whatever you're trying to do. So now I'm gonna put in here uh, the portion where we have the, uh, text field for the email submit and I'm just using a rounded rectangle and in here I'll type in email address and once again it has to be a pain in the ass and make it really tiny and I'll move this over here and just get a gray color around there and if you want to uh, widen your 
fields right here. You know what? I'm going to go to view and hide the... Where is it at? Oh, it's such a pain in the ass. I'm being slow right now. Getting rid of that pixel grid thing. All right, so now I take this and scale it down. Move that over. Okay, and then have the call to action over here. So I'm just gonna duplicate that. And the call to action button copy, I'm gonna change from notify me, that's what he had, to get a free copy. And I'll explain that in a second. And we'll make this white. This right here, this color. We'll move it over. Right around there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna push that over just a bit. Move this over. Take this guy right here and widen it a little bit. There we go. All right, so for his call to action button copy, we see that he has notify me, which isn't bad. It's better than click here or submit. Uh, but right here, he has 10 first signups. We'll get a free full license. It's kind of wordy in my opinion. Uh, but what he decided to do to, in order to simplify things is quickly make the form stand out a little bit more. So if I hide everything we can see here, so the, the form's kind of buried a little bit down there. And also get rid of this part portion right there, or at least move it down a little bit. So real quickly, I'm gonna control T that layer and drag that down. Uh, that way, this is more of like a focal, uh, the center focal point, I guess you could say, because uh, I didn't want to line the text up here. So what I decided to do instead was to add something down here, and that is be one of the first 10 signups to get a free copy, just like that, and make it a font size more like 18 or something like that. All right, so now we zoom out a little bit. You can see there's a pretty good improvement. And I'm gonna go to image canvas size and make this a little bit uh, taller. So height, we'll push this down and we'll use more like 900. And I actually had no problem with kind of how he was doing the, um, the feature or there's some content down here basically. Uh, so if I bring back that, yeah, there it is. If I just take that, copy that, oops. Yeah, where is it right here? Just want to copy this. Actually, I'm being slow. I'm just going to move it down like this with the select tool. There we go. Something like that. All right, and then basically something like this, kind of keeping what he had before. So now what we can see is we're going from this here. To this, other, you know what? I don't like that. One second. I want to be able to show these side by side. So let me take all this stuff here, group them. All right. So basically, we're going from this right here, and like I said, it's not bad, to this, which really just feels a little bit more modern. And I definitely think I would even make this bigger as well. And I think definitely, you know, based on my own experiment, experience with design and split testing, this would likely convert better, definitely. Um, but again, always split test, don't make assumptions. And for those of you who don't know what split testing is, go to Google and type it in. It's basically a way to determine two variations, you know, which variation is the winner based on a split testing service. Google has one, Google Analytics, it's free. Uh, there's several paid versions and they're really cool. You can basically just upload two variations of a site. So like you'd have index A, 
be this one, the original or the baseline copy. And then index B could be something like this. And then you would send traffic to it and the split testing service would randomly, you know, it'd alter between showing one visitor this one and the other vision, visitor the other one. And then it would uh, determine based on whatever your goal was set as, like, you know, whatever page leads to a successful email entry. Um, you know, it, it will tell you through statistical significance which one is more effective. So I would definitely say in terms of uh, design and just experience, uh, past experience, that this would definitely be a better uh, result likely. All right. So yeah, just a quick uh, tutorial, about 15 minutes here. Um, so I do this sort of thing uh, for with one-on-one -on -one training uh, through Design Course Premium, with which I just launched recently here. And so Design Course Premium is right here, and I'm all, I'm launching with these three products here: Mentor, which is one-on-one -on -one design training; VizID, which is Visual Identity Design Course. It's basically 22, I think, different lesson videos that show you how to design an entire brand identity, visual identity for a company, which includes things like logo design, color schemes, etc. And then WiseBanner.com. I uh, that's also my product, and you get that for free as well. Oh, not for free, but for the actual membership, the first month membership, you get that. So another thing that I wanted to address just at the end of this video is, uh, you know, after launching, some people had mentioned, you know, that's too expensive, you know, the $49.95, or if you use a promo code that I have right now, it's $39.95 a month. That sounds a lot if it has to be every month, but you can cancel anytime you want. So if you wanted to order and then just cancel, you can cancel uh, after that, and you get that first 30 days and the thing is if you use this one-on-one -on -one design training i'll be able to help you big time to the point you know within a single month you probably be able to really improve your skills if you were dedicated and, and really worked at it and so having my direction hopefully would help i don't i don't even say hopefully it definitely would help you be able to be be able to charge more so you know for the cost of a couple outings to like applebee's or something uh versus gaining a lot of knowledge uh and, and good tips in terms of how you can better yourself as a designer so you can charge more it's a no-brainer obviously so all right that's enough of me trying to sell my stuff all right so uh check out designcourse.com subscribe here on youtube if you haven't and i will see you tomorrow goodbye